Good afternoon. Um, this <clears throat> uh, this talk is about part of my work uh, with the uh, with Office of Economic Impact and Diversity. Uh, help what I, what I during one year I dedicated fifty percent of my time helping that office to set up what now it's called Energy Justice Office, but uh, uh, DOE. Um, and, you know, one of the things they, why do they hire like a person that is on so a power systems engineer by training? Uh, I work in power systems economic most of my, most of my career. Um, and, um, and the reason why they, they asked somebody like me to, to, to join the, the team was they wanted to really come up with more quantitative, quantitative forms of, um, uh, of addressing equity. Uh, in, in energy planning. So what I'm going to be talking about is part of that uh, part of that work. And one of the objectives we focus is on energy and security and how to reduce energy security and why energy security is so important. Um, it affects a significant part of the of the population, as you can see in this uh, chart. There is a lot of uh, households that uh, uh, report. Energy insecurity uh, issues, you know, that can can be in uh, reported in multiple multiple ways. So the inability to uh, to to pay electricity bills, to keep their the houses um, um, warm, or even like things like uh, depending on the utility policies, receiving some disconnection uh, notice and or act actually effective uh, disconnection. Um, so, this is mostly um, related to the energy burden issue and the energy burden issue is the percentage or the amount of um, household income that goes to pay energy uh, bills. So, when the energy burden is very high, so when it starts to go, you know, say, uh, above 6%, it becomes a problem. Uh, for most families, uh, which means that it becomes a um, uh, 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 people uh, a household will struggle to to pay their their bills. So here, this this chart tells us how the energy burden look like um, in in the uh, medium energy burden per uh, region, which is the one in. Uh, in, in, in brackets. So if you just look at the problem from what happens in general, it's kind of pretty good. We have things around 3%, 4% across the country. But when we look at the low income uh, energy burden, so we just like take the low income households, uh, we'll see, you know, things getting, for example, uh, around New England up to uh, 10%. So what we really see is like the, the burden of, of low income households is, you know, significantly higher than the average. And there is uh, 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 also a social, social demographic uh, uh, factors that, that, that also or social demographic uh, correlations with this, with these numbers that we can also encounter, for example, uh, um, just uh, the 40, the, the, the Black population is 45% more burden on average than the, uh, than the rest of the of the population in the in the U.S. So this is actually an energy policy problem. It's also you know we can address this through other uh, through other instruments of the of the of the economics, but it is also an energy uh, policy problem. And the question is uh, from those who are. Uh, uh, Planning the systems, or even planning a resilient system, thinking about distributed energy resources, uh, thinking about uh, um, energy efficiency. Uh, how can we uh, plan the, our our systems, our resources, in ways that are more equitable? So we know that if we give some of these uh, heavily burdened uh, communities some ownership about these resources and some of the value of these resources you can help reduce them the, the, help them reduce their their energy burden um, but the question is traditionally in our in our methodologies the methodologies of planning uh, and and designing policies 
for the for the electricity, but in general for the energy systems, we don't uh, take into account social demographics. We are our systems are just systems of uh, uh, loads. Every consumer is a load, uh, and and sometimes we we distinguish uh, there's some economic. Um, monetization of like load curtailment that has, we can put an economic value on that, but there is no actually an, an equitable value in this. We don't look at uh, uh, at those loads as actually consumers, and we don't look behind their 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 social demographics. So what we really try to do in this work is to come up with a methodology where we can actually minimize the energy insecurity, taking into account um, the 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 socioeconomic uh, characteristics of a population with the objective of deploying equitable forms of, of uh, policy intervention. And here we considered um, four types of uh, policy interventions. This methodology can be expanded, but, but in this study we did, we looked at weatherization interventions, rooftop solar um, interventions, community solar and community wind. Which are these are the, the ones in the in the green, um, and we we set up okay how much the objective would be like how much of these interventions how can these interventions could work together at the different at the different uh, uh, tracks, census track level, to come up with to minimize the energy burden of a of a particular population. So we took a, a national uh, uh, track level uh, data. And we developed an optimization model that already does this to minimize the energy insecurity. It comes up with, the, with this optimal portfolio of combined technologies and combined policy interventions um, uh, across, the, across the US with a census tract um, granularity. So for each census tract, uh, what we re what really did was to create different household archetypes, trying to represent different uh, realities, even within a uh, particular uh, census tract, uh, and that combine both social demographic characteristics and even characteristics of the energy consumption, like, for example, uh, the primary heating fuel of a building or the, the building types. Uh, um, so we mixed existing data that we have for describing a building with social demographics of a particular uh, region. We look also at the climate data and the, the, the technology potential and intervention costs across different uh, regions of the country. Uh, and, and we also look at the costs of these interventions from the perspective of um, the investment costs and how much would it cost to install in different in different ways. And uh, the weatherization actually, which is the, the very last one, uh, the cost benefits, we, we took it from the weatherization system program, program in the uh, in the in the US um, and we used as well mapped into this to this problem. I'm not going to go very detailed into what the, the, the optimization model was, but I mean what the main distinction here is we actually minimize energy insecurity that we define as a the amount of energy burden above a certain threshold. Um, so you say for, normally you use six percent for that, which is six percent of, of uh, as the energy burden threshold above which a, a household is considered energy insecure. So we 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 in the in here what we do do is like the deviations of energy burden above this threshold. We minimize them there on the right, and then we you know, we subject that that uh, objective function to a bunch of like techno-economic. Um, uh, constraints and then a budget constraint, which is the, the where the energy policy decision uh, framework uh, is modeled. You have like overall intervention costs, and there is this uh, uh, theta value that is uh, associated to the budget uh, of, of your energy policy budget that tells you like how what your predisposition or how much uh, uh, your you as a policy decision maker. Want to spend in in this in this type of policies? Um, this is just a case study for for the Wayne County. Uh, so we are very granular. We represented basically fourteen thousand uh, uh, buildings with almost three thousand 
uh, household archetypes to actually represent all different combinations of of uh, things that 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 can uh, can happen in terms of socio demographic and characteristics of the the buildings. Um, we consider those those costs for for uh, for energy interventions, and uh, what we what we found out is that you know we with with certain deployment of uh, you know say eight megawatt deployment of rooftop solar, eighty one megawatt uh, of of uh, of community solar, uh, just a megawatt of community wind and weatherizing, uh, two thousand three hundred seventy four households. We were able to. Uh, most likely, um, if you see on the on the right hand side, there is a histogram of the energy burden of the overburden population. Um, that was all above six percent, and most of the the population with those interventions was was brought to back to the be, below the, the the threshold. And the reason why we were not able to do it every all of them is is because you know there are still. Uh, the, 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 here we are just considering these four interventions, and they are mostly focused on electricity, except for the weatherization, and there are other consumptions that that households might have that are not necessarily uh, or cannot be solved by this by this type of interventions. Here is some when you think about that theta value and the predisposition to really um, really change. Uh, your allocate budget to this to this type of policies. What you see is like, you know, as you increase uh, uh, your 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 theta value, you 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 actually like diversify the type of the type of interventions, and you actually reduce energy uh, um, in in security. But that is it's very interesting to see that the energy insecurity. So if you just look at the the differences. Um, between between the the so the positive deviations uh, as energy security in regarding to the energy burden. So as you keep putting more money into this problem, you will uh, decrease the the or keep decreasing the energy burden, but not necessarily the, the energy insecurity. So there is like some saturation there. It becomes more and more expensive to reduce the 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 energy insecurity of certain populations or certain uh, cases that are very very hard very expensive to actually reduce them so this is why you have like a curve like that when you actually increase the theta value you will there is a moment where you can address most 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 of the the energy burden of the most of the population but then it kind of saturates saturates you start putting money in reducing energy burden but not necessarily uh, in um, uh, in reducing the insecurity problem. Um, this is just a chart. I think it's, it's a little bit complicated. It's my last chart, I promise. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> um, see on the on the on, on the x axis you have the community owned renewables and on the so basically community based uh, community solar community wind and 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 community solar uh, megawatt installation, and on the y-axis we have the rooftop, so the amount of rooftop, and every single of single circle is a a, a a track. So basically, for each track, what is the optimal way of reducing energy burden? So the, the circles mean different circles in different positions means that there are different uh, tracks. Uh, so in a, some of them you need just rooftop solar. If they are more in the y axis, uh, um, some of them you will need a combination of both. But what you can see here is this is all this is per building. And what you can see is like the, the and the colors mean the, 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 the weatherization solution. So more, uh, more color, more, more yellow, it's more weatherization, less solar than weatherization. But what it, what it really means, especially when you look at the, the chart on the, on, the, on the right, is like, there is this is is really a, a track level. This is really a community level, if you want, intervention. Because in a, each community, the the combination of the optimal combination of interventions to reduce energy security is really really diverse. And, and, and although we are talking about the same the same county, even within the county, there is the what can what can decrease energy burden, uh, or what is more effective to decrease energy burden and energy security completely varies um, across the solution. And this is 
mostly because of sociodemographics uh, um, of the of the different tribes. So just uh, to conclude, basically addressing energy insecurity is uh, also a energy policy uh, problem, and to address those, we have to bring sociodemographics um, into our traditional energy planning models. Um, so place-based implementation of this 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 type of policy intervention is very important, as you can see. Having a look of a, a particular a particular community, a particular uh, um, track, and then develop uh, uh, the solutions for specifically tailored with the population in that uh, in that track. Uh, it's it's very important, uh, and the, the the role of the utilities in this uh, now that we're like we're talking about an electric uh, electric utilities uh, audience or people that work in the power sector. It's really to uh, enable these things to happen. So we don't need to just go and like uh, uh, actively try and guess because this is, should be more a bottom up type of uh, um, process. You know, how can we through policy, through different interventions can work with the, with the communities, but then the role of utilities in this point is to enable this process to, to this transformation to, to happen. Um, and keep ensuring the reliability and resilience quality of service uh, for, for, for the communities. This is just my last slide. Uh, there is a paper just published uh, exactly with these results. Um, and this is the people that participated in this uh, project, most of them G40 fellows as well. Yeah, could you just answer one question? So when you speak of um, energy insecurity being intractable in some areas, what would be some examples of where energy insecurity still remains difficult to tackle? Do you have off the top of your head? Do you have thoughts on this? Yes. Uh, for example, people that still use coal to heat their homes. Uh, how are you gonna? You can install as much DERs as you can in their house, but you're not gonna solve this problem unless you make the electricity so cheap and give them like, you know, uh, uh, heating electricity, the heating based sources or something to replace them. Yeah, to replace them. So you need a way more. Yeah, diversify way more your your. Right, products. that's quite costly compared to yeah. some of these other ones. Okay. 